Okay, let's talk about some uh, PC boards today. Um, first, I'm going to talk about proto boards. And there are various types of proto boards that I've run across in my lifetime. Um, these are these are some really old ones back when there was blue blue PC board material, really weird stuff. So I'm not exactly sure who uh, these. I think these are vector. So these are like wire wrap boards and solder boards and stuff. So these are these are this one's double sided, um, but I'm not sure it's plated through. I don't think so. I don't think these are plated through holes, but it is double sided. And this is only single sided. And uh, yeah, these are made by the Vector Corporation. They were they did a lot of stuff for wire wrapping and stuff, but uh, this one even has uh, some gold contacts at the end, some so selective gold plating over over here, and then the rest is tin. So um, there's some buses for power and ground, and uh, or maybe just ground. This one just has a ground. I think these are all uh, no power and ground. And uh, this one might actually be for an Apple II computer. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I've had these for <laughs> I've had these forever. Um, and uh, when I was working at Hewlett Packard, we had stock rooms. So you could go into the stock room and just get stuff. And they had a couple different PC board uh, proto board options for you. Uh, this one, which I've never found. Um, let me zoom in a bit on these boards here. Go back to these guys. Um, so yeah, so vector. Um, so uh, this one is just a bunch of plated through holes. Now everything used to be gold plated back, back in the old days, and uh, the edge connector doesn't even have any traces off of it. So the edge connector is kind of useless on this board. So uh, whoever laid out this board, <laughs> they went, really weren't thinking ahead, um, and so. I've never found just a bunch of holes very useful. Every once in a while, I guess it's okay. You can still buy tons of these boards on eBay. Um, not, not this form factor, but, but boards like this uh, in different sizes. And they're just a bunch of plated through holes. But like I said, I don't find these particularly useful. Um, and then there were boards that were basically like this, which just had a bunch of places for dips. So if you're building a digital circuit, that's fine. But they weren't really great for other things, and they were a little bit limiting. So I never was quite fond of these boards either. But then they had these boards, and these were my favorite proto boards when I was working at Hewlett Packard. And um, yeah, I like these. The part number was a 5020-6793. And this proto boards for something. I think these are just generic proto boards. It had the, the duplicate edge connectors on both sides. And at least they had like little traces going out and places for you to solder. But what I really liked about it was there was on 0.3 centers and then they had two traces running underneath. And the, and the ones that had the, uh, that skipped a beat when they put in their vias, those were the ground lines. And then the ones that had every one, that, those were the, uh, those were the power or, 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 or opposite, however you wanted to wire it. Maybe, maybe all of them were ground and then the skip ones were power. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, I use these a lot, <laughs> a lot. So um, when I when I designed my own boards, um, I'll put some links down below of where you can buy uh, uh, my boards. Um, I designed this board kind of in homage to this to this HP board. So um, it also has the point three centers and the uh, power and ground going through. And I have mine labeled plus plus V and ground. Um, and so yeah, these are. Uh, these are cute little boards. I use these all the time. And um, then I, I kind of upgraded, uh, <coughs> sorry, I upgraded uh, to to do a uh, uh, an analog board. So it has the same kind of stuff a little bit at the bottom, but it's, it's very different. And then this one has plus V and minus V in ground, but then it has this area here that's, that's kind of made for analog stuff where you have multiple point to point wiring. So it's kind of like the idea of just holes everywhere, but with some interconnects as well. So you can kind of put in different shapes here. And then interspersed in here are like some TO3 packages, some surface mount packages, a little uh, ground plane here to do uh, dead bug type stuff. And so, yeah, so I, I, I built this board. So these, these boards are both on my share site. I'll put the link down below. Um, so w w another way to go about prototyping is just to use 
FR4. Just, just this is just single sided, just FR4, and I keep this run all the time. And um, a lot of people doing FR uh, uh, RF work like to use this, and they do dead bug. They they just turn things upside down, and they uh, and they wire things to this, and you just have a, a solid ground plane. And uh, I know somebody that that this is all they used to ever prototype on. This was just like their thing. So so I do keep some of this around. Um, there's another uh, board that you can get, which is this, which is a whole bunch of stripes. And uh, so there's just lines and, and it's single sided again. Um, but you can like build the thing and then you can like use an X-Acto knife or a Dremel tool or something and then cut it. So you can have like sections and you can like have interconnects, but then break those. And um, again, I, uh, I'm not crazy about these. I've, uh, I do have some just because they do come in handy if you need something that's just a long strip of something. Um, but I don't use these very often. All right. So uh, uh, I found another maker that has come out with a proto board recently. And uh, I had some built. And uh, these are these are his board, uh, his design. And uh, I'll put a link down below for his stuff as well. Um, it's on the same share site at PCB Way. And uh, this was done by uh, Ryan Flowers, W7RLF, and uh, Protoboard Rev2. Now, the interesting thing about this board is uh, the, this side is just a ground plane, okay? But there's all these little dots, so there's vias. So these little connections, kind of like in between these squares, these little diamond things, those are all grounds. So those are all grounds. So for RF design, um, this is probably a really, really nice board because it's a, a solid ground plane underneath. And if you're using surface mount stuff, you can just bridge the gap of everything. So I think I think that's basically what this is best for is like surface mount RF work. Um, but I was really intrigued by this board and uh, thought that I'd support him. So I bought I bought these. And um, yeah, he's even got a website here, miss.geek.com, uh, miscellaneous.geek. Dot com. Um, anyway, like I said, I'll put a link down below so you can check his stuff out. So um, if you like through hole stuff, you can you can check out my boards. If you like surface mount stuff, you can check out his board. Um, I might you, I might steal his idea and maybe maybe do one of my other proto boards uh, using some of these ideas. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I got, a, I got a stack. I got a stack of his boards. And so that's kind of the PC board, you know, prototyping stuff. There's probably others. Maybe people can comment below if you have any other ones that you like to use. Um, this one seems to be pretty popular. People buying this off of uh, off of the website. So um, this one's kind of more generic. So they probably say, "Well, I can get that anywhere." But uh, this one kind of is uh, sparks some interest in the uh, in the analog prototype airing area. Now, I just got a, a PC board yesterday that's uh, part of my Osborne project, and uh, I, I didn't want to devote an entire video for it, so I th thought, it, thought I would throw it in onto this video. And uh, so these are little boards that I, that I had built. Now, this is not my design. This came from Wayne Wieser, V-I-S-S-E-R, and uh, he designed this and uh, put it up on shared site. Um, and he had a, uh, this was designed in, in uh, KiCad, uh, KiCad, I think it's KiCad. Um, and um, he did not have any Gerber files. He just had the actual uh, uh, KiCad design file. And so I had to fire up KiCad and, and develop Gerbers for this and then had them built. Um, so if, if you don't know how to use KiCad and you don't know how to create a Gerber and everything, um, I've got to had and, and put Ger this, this particular board, I put the Gerbers on my site so you can just order them if you, if you need them. Um, so what this is um, allows you to use a standard floppy pinout with an Osborne. Osborne pinouts on their disk drives are non-standard. Um, they don't have the same pinout. They're close, <laughs> but not the same. So you, this is the edge connector that would be on the floppy drive, on the five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And then this would connect to a, a different floppy drive. And then uh, you can s select so it's just drive A or just drive B by this little jumper here. 
and here's five volts that you can run your floppy drive off of. It, uh, five volts comes off of here. Now, if you order these boards, it even has a slot in it for the uh, floppy, floppy drive keying. If you order these boards, though, make sure you select the gold plate option. So you want you want to have a gold plate on edge connectors, um, and so uh, the, I selected the, the the gold gold plate for these. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be using these. Um, maybe in the future, but I, I'm, I'm kind of on. Uh, so what these are for is using a floppy emulator. So if you have some type of old equipment that has a floppy drive in it, and it's hard to get floppies and stuff, you get a floppy emulator, and it allows you to put in a a, a thumb drive, and it and it acts like a floppy. You can put them into like uh, old synthesizers or keyboards or uh, old computers. Anything that uses a floppy drive, you can replace it with a thumb drive. So that that comes in really really handy. And this one was built for the Osborne. Okay. And um, people put in these things into their Osborne, so now they have a, a thumb drive instead of floppies in their Osborne. And I, you know, I think that kind of takes away from the, the genuine nature of having an Osborne and, and holding and touching floppies all the time kind of gives you that old retro feel. After I upgraded my uh, Osborne to 9600 baud, I really don't feel a need for this anymore because I can basically uh, create an entire floppy in three minutes now at 9600 baud. So, I mean, that might be slow for some people, but um, I think for the what I want out of the Osborne, I want the look and feel of the old computer. I think I'm going to live with the 9600 baud and, and not do this project. Um, I have some of these boards, and if you need one, let me know, and I could pop one out to you. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll put a link down below to this guy's site as well, the guy who developed this, and uh, you can see how how to use those um, those 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 GoTech floppy emulators. Now, a, a word of warning though on the GoTech floppy emulator. One of the other reasons that maybe I won't be doing this project is that GoTech ran out of chips, and due to the chip shortage right now, they changed the microprocessor. In order to use things in weird weird things like like uh, Osborns, you have to flash those GoTechs with uh, a third party software, and they've upgraded to a different chip, so you can no longer flash them. So if you have an old GoTech, GoTech, you're good to go. But if you have a new one, and it doesn't work, uh, so be be a, be aware of that. So anyway, lots about uh, prototyping and PC boards in general, and uh, yeah, whoa, <laughs> yeah, there you go.